Welcome back to DWeb Decoded, a podcast by Filecoin Foundation that explores the intersection of blockchain and the data economy. I'm your host, Aaron Stanley, and today I'm joined by Caitlin Beagle, who's head of protocol governance at Filecoin Foundation. Caitlin, it's great to have you on the show. Likewise, it's great to be here, Aaron. Amazing. So to get started, why don't you give yourself a short introduction and tell us a bit about how you became interested in blockchain governance, which is uh, the theme of today's show. Yeah, thanks. So I've been at the Filecoin Foundation for about three and a half years now, um, but I've always been interested in governance. Uh, prior to coming here, I was actually a political scientist. I worked for various federal governments, national governments, and local governments, uh, trying to understand how you use technology to make democracy work better for people. Um, at the same time, I have always been very interested in blockchain technology. I like, mined my first Bitcoin when I was in high school. Um, and it wasn't very long before the overlap between my interest in uh, democracy and public ownership and people's engagement with the things that are most necessary for their daily lives uh, began to overlap with blockchain technology and the promise of being able to deliver this information in a way that was trustless and open source. Um, so around 2017, I became really interested in the ways that blockchains were being used for public administration um, and the way open source governance allowed us to experiment with traditional modes of governing uh, really high value project spaces. So blockchain governance is one of these things that kind of has multiple different meanings to different people, different communities and chains, ecosystems uh, treat it differently. They approach it differently. Tell us about yeah. uh, just from the from the kind of from the high level, how does the Filecoin ecosystem approach blockchain governance? Yeah, well, first and foremost, governance is a very simple yet broad thing, right? Um, it is simply referring to the way in which we structure a field of action. Right. So we have different inputs, different obligations um, and different things that we want to achieve collectively. And governance simply refers to the processes, um, the rules, the regulations, perhaps the tools uh, that we have to help manage all of these things. Right. Um, that being said, there's a lot of misinformation in the Web3 or decentralized web space about what governance is. Um, so, for example, some people think that governance is always just about voting. Um, they think that governance is always this purely democratic thing where communities are always making 100 percent of any decision for a given project or protocol. Um, and these things don't always have to be true. In the Filecoin ecosystem, uh, when we think of governance, we are predominantly talking about protocol governance. So it's figuring out how to make collective decisions about what happens to the Filecoin protocol. And this includes both immediate technical changes that we want to see, um, as well as sort of the long-term development trajectory of this ecosystem overall uh, and the way that protocol development work currently uh, will inform that development down the line. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So maybe just by way of example, like how would you kind of compare and contrast this the Filecoin approach to maybe what some other protocols do? Where I know there's a lot of other protocols yeah. that'll do things like, uh, like oh, we're gonna we're gonna you know somebody's proposing uh, has a proposal to do a certain amount of like marketing spending or do a certain activation or do some kind of project, and then the community will vote on that. So you're saying that that's not necessarily something that the Filecoin world would do. Uh, we're really more focused on kind of the technical improvements to the protocol rather than. Uh, you know, should we spend money on this or that or the other thing? Is that is that a fair way of yeah. putting of looking at it? Sure. So I think the most important thing to remember is that every project in the decentralized web space is different, right? It services a different use case, a different mission, maybe a different set of values, and every project has its own unique community of contributors. All of these things are really important because governance is something that should be designed to service these things uniquely uh, rather than something that's sort of out of the box and sort of one size fits all. Right. Every project has different things that it needs to govern effectively uh, and different preferences about how it wants to do that. Um, some projects, especially lower lower level protocols like Filecoin or Ethereum, um, their governance processes tend to be a little bit slower a little bit more intensive and oftentimes have really significant off-chain components, right? 
Uh, and this is important because when you are developing something at the lowest possible layer of a blockchain tech stack, the actual expertise required, um, the actual cost of implementing a change, all of these things can be really great. And therefore, we've seen proposal systems like what Filecoin has with its Filecoin improvement proposals process uh, have been really critical in structuring a mechanism of feedback for contributors that are able to purport changes, understand and propose solutions, um, and in many cases are then going to actually be the people working to implement these changes um, on chain. There are lots of other ecosystems uh, that technically are a little bit more simple. Uh, maybe their missions or their purpose are a little bit more compact. Uh, Filecoin is a decentralized marketplace for data storage. There's tons of different economic actors in the space, lots and lots of different ways that you can use the Filecoin uh, tech stack in your own business use case, lots of different ways that we could sort of cut up this ecosystem and community into different pieces. And many of those pieces have their own interests. Uh, for other types of projects, however, this isn't always the case. Uh, a lot of DeFi protocols can be a little bit more simple, um, even when they are managing tons of value and tons of coins and are really popular projects. Most users are pretty aligned in what they're there for. Uh, maybe they're uh, putting liquidity into staking pools. Maybe they're taking it out. They're lending. They're leasing tokens. They're doing these things, but the actual interactions are pretty standardized and pretty typical. And in ecosystems like this, um, it's become really popular for voting to become mostly on-chain and very, very lightweight. So what we see is, um, again, a lot of DeFi platforms, for example, using on-chain voting tools to make decisions about how they allocate money in a public treasury or sort of simple technical decisions that they want to see implemented on the actual chain itself. Uh, and these processes and tools can work really well. But I think the number one thing to keep in mind is that different ecosystems have varying levels of complexity and also different inputs and outputs that they deem valuable. And for that reason, it's important that uh, as governance best practices continue to emerge in the space, that we continue to understand that governance is a really complicated process uh, that a lot of ecosystems are still beginning to understand. Yeah, and I think the the question of on chain voting is a really interesting one, where it's it's basically similar yeah. to like proxy voting in like kind of a traditional corporate governance. You know, you own shares in a company, you go to the annual meeting, you okay. vote on these shareholder proposals essentially, and it's like okay, I own you know a thousand file coins, and then I get to you know vote vote my share of the vote my share my share of like my share of the vote is basically wow. determined by how many file coins I own. I vote yay or nay on this proposal. And then if more people vote yay than nay, then it gets it's passed, right? That's basically the idea behind these, these on-chain voting uh, concepts. What you're saying is like yeah. Filecoin is a little too, the ecosystem is a bit too complex uh, for that type of like, almost like you know, just either like a yes or a no type of system, right? Uh, where if you look at like, you know, Bitcoin, for example, you have like Bitcoin miners, you have uh, you have companies that are building on Bitcoin, you have big corporate entities that are building on Bitcoin, you have the actual developers themselves. So there's a lot of entities that are very important that may not necessarily have the, they would be, they basically be like wiped out if they, they would lose every time if it was just a matter of, if the vote was strictly like yes or no right. based on how many coins you own, right? Is that kind of the same dynamic as with Filecoin is what you're saying? With so like, the, there's so many stakeholders involved here that may not necessarily have like, the financial firepower to uh, for, for for like an on-chain voting to be a really like effective competitive uh, mechanism is that is that kind of the idea? Yeah, this is a really good question. So, uh, Filecoin, when Filecoin mainnet went live a few years ago, uh, Filecoin had adopted the Ethereum EIP one as its main governance model, right? So it wanted to use the same governance framework as the Ethereum community. And this is a framework that predominantly emphasizes off-chain interactions between core stakeholders. So looking at core developers, writing proposals, having public review processes, and once it was decided that a process or a proposal would be accepted, um, using core implementation teams and ascribing them the responsibility for making the desired change, right? Uh, this is a great process. It still is used in the Ethereum ecosystem, um, and it was a great process for Filecoin for a long while. The challenge is that as the Filecoin ecosystem has changed and matured, and as every project will, it has developed sort of its own ecosystem and its own community, developed its own standards and expectations for that community, uh, we've seen that this process has begun to 
um, strain a bit of what the community wants to see happening, right? So this process relies, again, on a lot of off-chain interactions um, and a lot of sort of collective agreement or what we would call soft consensus in order to determine that a proposal or a FIP, Filecoin Improvement Proposal, um, is going to become policy for the network, right? So somebody writes the proposal, they outline what the code may look like, they describe some of the technical design, um, core developers take a look at it, they sign off, and if everyone seems to more or less agree that this would be a, a net positive improvement, um, then we deem it accepted. And implementation teams, uh, we have several of them, they work together and coordinate amongst themselves to write the actual code, test it, and then deploy it on the network during a regularly scheduled network upgrade. The challenge with something like this is that it does have a really high bar for accepting proposed changes, right? It requires that nearly everyone sort of universally agree that there's no perceived unintended consequence of the proposed change. And this almost always means that there's not a clear or direct cost to the proposed change other than that which is associated with network upgrades. The challenge is, again, as the Filecoin ecosystem has continued to change and develop, community members who have been longtime contributors to Filecoin have begun to indicate that they want the community to consider more complex and different types of proposals, um, ones that propose different economic changes to the network, large structural changes to some of its programs, um, and other things that really are impossible for almost an entire group of people to universally agree are true. Because of this, we've needed to begin to think critically about how Filecoin could update and adapt its governance system to both react to the changes that community members seek to make, while also still being robust, secure, and really, again, focused on high-quality long-term outcomes uh, rather than sort of short-term decision-making. Yeah, that's interesting. So what you're saying is basically initially the initial idea behind the FIP was that uh, to reach a soft consensus, it basically it kind of had to be like a slam dunk proposal, right? Where like everybody kind of yeah. universally agrees that this is basically a good idea. Like the one I usually think back to is I think this is what maybe one of the earliest FIPs where there was a decision to change the name from a Filecoin miner to a storage provider. This was kind of during you know, when China was China was sort of cracking down on some Bitcoin miners and things, and it's just okay. It's not advantageous to call ourselves miners, right? And like that was kind of a slam dunk. Okay, nobody like really disagreed with sure. that. Um, and but now that the network is getting much more larger and more complex, you have a lot more different types of actors in place, and people are demanding or, or people are are requesting types of changes that are not necessarily <laughs> going to be slam dunks, uh, but they sure. are changes that are their proposals that are important enough to be considered. Right. Uh, so sure. you're saying that we need to be finding new ways of essentially how do you kind of you know take these these maybe you know maybe it's a bit more a bit more controversial proposals let's say and how do we kind of work those into the or how do we kind of mold our existing framework to incorporate these more maybe a bit more polemic proposals? Um, sure. Maybe so there's something maybe, that really stands out. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. There's you know, I was at Consensus a few months ago, and I, I introduced myself to someone working on another project, and he said, oh, Filecoin, like, that's an OG project. That project's been around forever. That's really cool. Um, and we had a really good conversation about it. And it was a good reminder for me that, yeah, Filecoin, <laughs> when, you know, blockchain first burst onto the scene, before we had the term Web3, before we really, you know, the decentralized web has sort of a long legacy of open source projects behind it. But in a lot of ways, Filecoin was a really, really exciting edge case that began to emerge right after the success of Ethereum. And I think it's important to remember that it is from that place that a lot of you know, Filecoin's both technical design, but also its ecosystem design and early structuring, where it comes from. And at that point in time, it's really important to remember that there was this idea that in order to be trustless and permissionless and to really be what a blockchain project ought to be, that that project shouldn't be changeable, right? And this is something that is an idea that is still very alive and well in certain parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem, right? Um, that, you know, a blockchain project is what it says it's going to do. And the scope of governance beyond that should actually be really minimal. Um, EIP-1, which again, we adopted and use as the basis of our own governance system, 
was sort of set up and put in place for that very purpose, for the idea of saying that, you know, we're talking about core protocol changes. Those should be sort of few and far between. And if we're going to justify making one, everyone should pretty unanimously agree that this is important. And for Filecoin, this has worked really well for the past couple of years. When we look at all of the FIPS that have been processed and accepted in a pretty, again, off-chain, pretty open, public, and decentralized way, a lot of them propose pretty core technical improvements that have made the lives of contributors and especially storage providers a lot easier. These are technical changes that allow for faster transactions, clearer finality, lightweight messages, the ability to ch change different types of um, data that you're committing to the chain. I think that's a, a very light-handed way of saying that. Um, things that have just made it easier and better to use Filecoin over time. Um, but what you're pointing to is, yeah, that there are sometimes more complicated proposals. And what we're seeing is... Um, pretty key contributors to the Filecoin ecosystem who are saying, no, we think it's time actually for the Filecoin protocol to adapt and change in some pretty critical ways um, that are different than what was outlined in perhaps the original white paper. Um, and that is what we are trying to respond to when we think of how we could improve and how we will need to adapt our governance system going forward. Um, and it is it really reflects, I think, a changing ethos in the entire decentralized space where it's saying that, yeah, projects may be open source, but they still need to be agile in order to perform really well. So it raises an interesting question here where we're talking about governance, right? And you know, governance yep. by the, the process of, of, you know, kind of gradually reforming or improving the protocol. And now we're talking about basically governance of the governance process itself, right? We're talking about like gradual yep. changes, reforms to the way that we, to the processes by which we use to introduce changes and reforms to the underlying protocol. So how does that yep. work when you're, when you're rethinking, like whose, whose consensus is needed to, when we decide that we're going to re reform our governance processes, or we're going to do this instead of why, uh, how does yeah. that whole process work? Yeah. So the governance of the governance process, uh, we call this meta governance. Uh, it is the thing that I think is most interesting, frankly, about uh, any kind of open source project or organization. Uh, and it is challenging, right? Because to your point, right, if, if you want to change the governance process, aren't you sort of bound to use the governance process? Uh, and that's exactly the space that we find ourselves in right now, right? Where uh, I, so I work for the Filecoin Foundation, of course. Um, we, I am, and I am a full-time employee who works on governance, um, and yet I do not own the governance process. I am not in charge of it, and I certainly do not control it. Um, there are days when I wish that I did, uh, but alas, that's not the nature of what we do and what matters to us. Um, so yeah, so we work on proposals and we're able to um, devote time and attention and also money towards things that we think matter and could improve governance for the entire Filecoin community. But ultimately, we are still bound by the same rules as everyone else. So on my end, um, we have a proposal that was opened um, almost a year ago that has some proposed structural changes for what we'd like to see change in the Filecoin um, FIPS process, the improvement proposals process. Um, but uh, like anything else, this proposal needs to remain open and up for public scrutiny until it is finalized and hopefully deemed accepted. Um, and there's a chance that it isn't, right? There's a chance that community members say that they don't like these proposed changes. And so the burden on us is to figure out how do we actually make changes that are in everyone's interest Right, that really very fairly balance um, the ability of different stakeholders to come to the table and contribute when it matters most to them. Um, but how do we also make sure that people understand the changes that we're proposing uh, and are able to support this initiative when we, we go for final consideration before the Filecoin community? Doing that is really difficult. And over the past year, as we've tried to, again, propose new ideas, um, scope different amount, different kinds of research, build new tools, um, try and build out different community functions in order to work better in the governance process. These things take a lot of time and it can be difficult to know the balance between doing things openly and transparently and in a way that is well documented and accessible uh, and doing them very, very quick, uh, which is something that usually happens better when you're closed, you're private, and you're not as open to community feedback. So it's been a difficult trade-off. And to be honest, other ecosystems, I've seen them reform their own governance systems in very heavy-handed ways, which is just not how uh, we have done business. Um, 
frankly, some of those ecosystems have actually been really successful doing it that way. Um, but Filecoin started from this place of wanting to be decentralized in its community operations. And that's how we've approached governance up until uh, up until now. And as far as I'm aware, into the foreseeable future. Yeah, you you run this risk of with, with the heavy handed kind of interventions here. I mean, you do you 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 do run the risk of of kind of nuking part of your community, right? Or nuking the trust of your community. Totally. Like you do get some efficiency gains potentially, and maybe those efficiency gains will actually uh, be beneficial for the protocol. But there's going to be uh, you know a portion of the ecosystem that feels like their their feedback, their their consideration, their imp- their 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 input was not taken into consideration, right? And I think that's that's the the trade off, right? Is like do we want everyone to we are we you know are we going to kind of take our time, let this boil, let let this kind of simmer, and take everyone's input into consideration, or are we just going to kind of ram this through? And if we we fry you know this portion of the community community, then so be it. Like we have to do this for this for 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 efficiency's sake. So I think it's a tough trade off, right? It's 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 and it's it's one that's that sort of existed throughout all governance schemes in history, right? Like it's, it's uh, right. any kind of de- democratic government where, where you have uh, people voting in their own interests or electing leaders to, to make decisions on their behalf or whatnot. Um, so it's not necessarily a new problem, uh, but it is being applied in, in a different, a different situation here. Um, so it's, it's a super interesting one to wrestle with. And it's, it's interesting to see yeah. like, this is, this is not a, this is, this is, this has been a process that's been around for what, like 15 years now, you know, blockchain governance ever since Bitcoin came into existence, but it's still far from yeah. a exact science or art or anything. People are all, we're kind of all learning this as we go here. Um, so would love to maybe just hear from you a bit about what are some of the current uh, governance uh, kind of proposals or, or things that are on the community's mind right now, uh, as far as uh, kind of, kind of proposals to upgrade the protocol in some capacity. What are what are people really, you know, kind of focusing on right now? So, yeah, there have been some recent proposals um, that have been pretty technical in nature, but also pretty exciting to have as enhancements for the Filecoin protocol. Um, recently, uh, thinking of some of the final work that's been done on FIP86, which is fast finality in Filecoin, um, which allows Filecoin to confirm the correctness of, of blocks hundreds of times faster than it was able to previously. Um, additional enhancements to the operations of the Filecoin Ethereum virtual machine, um, and also some upcoming changes to the way that the Filecoin proofing system works, some enhancements uh, that will make it a lot lighter, but also a lot quicker uh, without compromising network security, of course. Uh, These things are exciting. And again, I think they underscore the nature that most FIPS that we have are still very technical in nature, since they have to do with consensus-dependent changes. Um, But there have also been some community conversations and discussions um, that have been going on for quite a while now. Um, some related to, there's a new one related to burning the existing Filecoin mining reserve. Um, there are also some that are focused on the Filecoin Plus program and potentially changing the way um, that the deal subsidy is allocated to different storage providers. Um, these are very much open conversations. And again, these are also good examples of the kinds of proposals that are very complicated and In many instances, proposed changing key elements of the Filecoin economic model, um, changing underlying business models for certain people who are involved in this ecosystem, um, and for lack of a better term, just affect different stakeholders in different and potentially unequal ways. Um, And so it's proposals like this that the FIPS process wasn't really initially designed to service very well. Uh, But again, we're looking for different ways that we can reform and improve the process uh, to hopefully bring greater debate um, and more fruitful resolution, uh, either to accept or reject proposals such as these in the future. Can you walk us through the main stakeholders in the ecosystem who are currently involved in the governance process? I know you mentioned storage providers, uh, but there's also token holders, there's the Filecoin Foundation, there's Protocol Labs, there's probably several others. Uh, Maybe give us an overview of who these folks are and maybe what their respective roles are. Yeah, so ideally, in my ideal world, in a mature protocol ecosystem, um, governance would become something that is pretty synonymous with community management, right? Where, you know, you are going in as a contributor, maybe you're taking part in working groups or a guild or whatever organization sort of exists for you to ask questions, raise ideas, prepare and present your projects, communicate with other people who are using this tool or technology as well, uh, build camaraderie amongst yourselves and go forward with new use cases, better ideas um, and new improvements that everyone can benefit from. 
that is the place that we want to see projects get to, where participating in governance is something that is universally valuable to everyone. And there aren't these sort of siloed, separate processes for technical approvals or anything else that folks feel like they are obligated to participate in. We want governance to be something uh, that is additive and that people understand intuitively how to participate with. Um, that being said, I think right now for Filecoin, yeah, a lot of the folks that you just named, uh, storage providers in particular, storage providers comprise a huge majority of the Filecoin community right now. Um, and aside from you know having to update their hardware or reconfigure software whenever there's a network upgrade, um, we want storage providers to be having a voice to give their expertise and to contribute their ideas and needs when we're considering changing parts of how the Filecoin protocol works. Uh, we also have a body of core developers. Many of these folks, uh, full disclosure, I am a core developer, uh, are folks who've been involved in the project from very early days. Um, they've been around. Many of these folks have actually built the most of the Filecoin uh, protocol are very critical subsystems, uh, and they are still involved in both drafting a lot of FIPS, but also reviewing, providing security audits, et cetera, for FIPS that are proposed by community members as well. Um, and I think beyond this, what I would like to see in the near term is more Filecoin clients um, and folks who are participating in sort of the data aggregation and preparation pipeline, them raising more of a community um, uh, faction within the Filecoin ecosystem, right? So folks who have data and want to see it stored in a decentralized way, um, in the past, that group of people hasn't been the primary emphasis for growth in this ecosystem, but they have a lot to contribute and are a critical part of any sort of data storage marketplace. So I'd like to see us find ways that we can um, engage them more directly and hopefully filter their expertise and their needs into the governance process as well. So you mentioned there's some new analytical tools for helping to reach consensus in the governance process. And I was hoping you could maybe discuss just what these tools are, which stakeholders they might apply to, and how they balance influence among the different actors, uh, perhaps like major storage providers vis-a-vis -vis smaller token holders. Yeah, totally. Uh, so what is the appropriate waiting for them? I don't know, right? Uh, this is one of those things that we sort of figure out in time, and it is, again, very outcomes dependent, right? What are we accepting? What are we rejecting? And how is it actually affecting the Filecoin protocol overall, not only in terms of its operations, but its security, uh, its robustness as a data storage protocol, right? Um, and this is, this is the question, not just for Filecoin, but for a lot of different ecosystems, right? Um, I think the thing that is most important for us when we think about tooling um, is again, knowing that there's not going to be sort of a one size fits all approach that works. So when we think of soft consensus, right, which is again, this really high bar for approval, it's this general sense that everyone sees this proposed change as a value add. There's no clear cost that folks are unwilling to pay. And there's no one really saying that, you know, this change is something they don't want to see happen. Uh, that is still actually a really good process for proposals that are predominantly technical in nature or are enhancing or fixing an existing part of the protocol that, yes, they may be consensus dependent, they may require a network upgrade, they may require peer review. Um, but overall, no one is going to object to the change being made because, again, it benefits everyone at very little cost to anyone. Um, Soft consensus in these cases allows us to move forward without necessary slowdowns, waiting for people to vote, asking people to pay gas fees to vote on chain for something that they don't have a strong opinion about, et cetera. Um, so to support these processes better, to give us a little bit more quantifiable direction as to what's happening with soft consensus, um, we have partnered with um, an open source project called Polis um, and uh, an ecosystem contributor uh, in the Filecoin project space uh, to build Metropolis, which is a polling tool that does sentiment analysis and allows for crowdsourced um, question gathering. So, for example, you can go in and you can indicate whether you like or dislike a proposal in general. You can also ask a question that will be randomly fed to other people who are also contributing their opinions. So you could propose an alternative. You can name something that you specifically dislike about the proposal and ask for other people to weigh in on it. And the idea is that by not only allowing folks to indicate a general sense of whether they like something or don't, but to also allow them to respond and have their response begin to shape the actual poll questions that other contributors will be asked, 
it gives us a very clear direction about the specific pieces of a proposal that people may really like and may really dislike. And again, gives us more quantifiable information, which we can give back to SIP authors and use them to help them refine better, um, more community aligned proposals. Aside from this, we are also experimenting um, with on-chain voting, which again is very difficult and trying to begin to answer the eternal question of what is the appropriate weight for somebody who wishes to have a say on a proposed change um, that will affect the Filecoin ecosystem in a big way, right? So if we're going to change the Filecoin crypto economic model, we better be sure that what we're proposing to change is what we really want, that the majority of this ecosystem wants to see. Um, and we're trying to figure out, again, how will we determine that? So there are certain metrics. We're looking at on-chain um, uh, raw byte power. We're looking at client deals. We are trying to, we've actually found a way to port over developer contributions in the Filecoin project space uh, on GitHub so that we can count those as well so that core developers also have a particular say in something being passed or not. Um, but again, all of this is still experimentation and building out this tool has been something that has been uh, surprisingly very difficult uh, in an ecosystem with hundreds of very smart, smart engineers. Um, it's a really complicated problem to solve, uh, especially when you layer on very necessary security considerations. Um, and remember that whenever you're changing a governance system, you are changing the balance of power and the distribution of ownership and say uh, for a given project space. And so it's not just about coming up with a solution that seems to work. It's making sure that the solution you're putting in place doesn't have elements to it um, that, again, could lead to unintended consequences and put your project at risk. Yeah, so I think it's important to try to avoid these Pyrrhic victory type situations where you, you may technically be winning, but you've actually caused so much damage via the process that everybody is kind of losing, uh, including the people that thought they won. So I think the challenge with all these types of situations is like kind of threading that needle, right? Um, but anyway, but this this new tool, this new sentiment tool seems really interesting, uh, really like a good breakthrough uh, as a way for capturing sentiment, feedback, and augmenting some of the ex existing tools that, that, uh, that you've already been using. So congrats on that. I know we're running out of time here, so just wanted to throw a couple of follow-up questions uh, your way uh, as we wrap up. So you've been doing this for about four years now, and... Really, you've been the network's been live for about four years now, and and you've been basically around that entire time. And uh, as we discussed, like these protocols evolve quite a bit over time, and so has Filecoin since its launch. And I thought it'd be a good chance to maybe just try to get your thirty thousand foot viewpoint here on maybe what has the community done well on the governance front, like where have we really excelled, and then maybe what are the things. Uh, that have been a bit more challenging. Where if, you know if somebody would have told you this four years ago, uh, it may have made your life a bit easier. Yeah, that the oh my gosh, this is actually one of my favorite questions to discuss, um, even internally, right? When we're thinking of planning and, and what we really want to focus on. So I think um, you're right. I've been here for about four years, um, and importantly, I also contribute and work in other ecosystems as well. So we're in Filecoin full time, but it is not the only project that I contribute to on the governance side. And I think what Filecoin has done exceptionally well is. The core contributors who participate in this project are incredibly committed and also incredibly skilled, right? It is a smart, trustworthy group of people. And this has allowed us to build out um, at sort of a pre in a preliminary way, the FIPS process as sort of a core technical workflow that has a high degree of volunteerism behind it. And I think that this is really important for open source projects to develop this ethos early on. And I think we've done a great job with that. Um, where I think we've had a difficult time is, frankly, and folks may disagree with this, I think our bias towards openness, especially at the foundation, right? Um, there is a sense that we need to be doing all of our work openly and publicly. Um, I think that this has led to slowdowns that we could have avoided. Um, and that we could have iterated upon systems of governance much faster um, if we had been a little bit more closed off when the community was a little smaller. Um, again, not always a popular opinion, especially when, you know, we're still developing best practices for governance. And there is still this thought that the only good governance is fully open, fully transparent governance. I think that comes with trade-offs. And I think at certain times, 
um, our interest in, you know, community feedback and community involvement. Um, what we really wanted was full community ownership, and that is a really difficult thing to achieve. Um, and so I think going forward, what we could learn from this um, is picking and choosing our battles um, and as guidance for anyone, not just, you know, staff at the foundation or people thinking about governance specifically, but anyone looking to write a proposal or propose a change. One thing to consider is, um, yeah, you should solicit feedback and get ideas as early as you can. That's always helpful in any kind of ideation process. But if you're going to be proposing something that is technical or really intensive, um, you should take that time before you write up a full proposal, et cetera, and really design the systems and subsystems very critically uh, that you want to propose. It gives people who are eventually going to review your proposal a much easier time to know exactly what to look at. Uh, it also sets expectations around what's needed and what's not. It helps frame the conversation in a scoped and approachable way. And it also allows you to move quicker so that, you know, by the time you're actually proposing a change, you already have like an entire system architected that you can use to support that proposal. Um, and this is something that I wish we had done with some of our proposed governance reforms, uh, where the very first thing we did was open the proposal. Uh, but then we had to build all of the tooling to go along with it. And that, that process has taken quite a while. So this has been a really great conversation, Caitlin. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and your insights on the Filecoin governance process, how it's involved, how folks can get involved. Uh, just want to turn it back to you for any final thoughts or uh, ways for people to reach out to you if they want to learn more. Yeah, I think um, one final thing is to say that uh, in the Filecoin ecosystem and any others, um, yeah, there may be staff who, who work on projects. I Again, I work on governance. Um, but these are still open source communities and open source projects. And if there's someone who really cares about components of these things, uh, there is a way for you to get as involved as anyone else. And that includes me. Um, so if anyone is interested in this, if they want to better understand how Filecoin governance works, if they want to contribute to governance reforms, uh, if you have a problem, if something isn't working for you and you want direct support trying to solve that problem as it relates to governance processes or FIPS, um, we have some channels on the Filecoin public Slack. Uh, we have the Phil Phipps channels for Phipps specifically. And we also have Phil Gov, uh, which is just for general sort of governance inquiries. Highly recommend folks reach out to us there. Um, I think that's both my final comment and the answer to your question, Erin. <laughs> um, but again, Filecoin is a community project and we want community members to be involved um, because at the end of the day, all of us are, are in the same boat and want the project to succeed. So thanks for your time, Caitlin. It's been a really great discussion. And thanks everyone for watching. And we will see you next time on DWeb Decoded. Great. Thank you.